I wanted to talk about using a yarn ball winder. I picked this one up at Joann's online. It cost about $40, but I had a coupon that brought it down to about $20. And what it came in, when it came in the box, was these two pieces. And what I wanted to show before you put this on is just this, uh, the gears that are going to be moving right here. So that's what's going to be happening underneath this. Now the step one is when you get it, is you take this tube and you put it on the gears. You make sure it's tight and give it a little tug. That's step one. Step two is this little thing here pulls out. Cause see how it's kind of wobbly? It's not going to do much. You're going to pull it out, but you're going to pull it out more than what you think you need to. Like a little extra tug. It feels like it won't come out anymore, but it will come out and you want it sturdy. So tug it until it comes out where it's sturdy like that. The third part is this part right here. This part is what's going to attach to a table. And I believe it goes up to one and a quarter inch, I believe. And this red knob on top is what simply lowers it or makes it higher, depending on the table you're using. And then, of course, you've got your handle to wind up in. So first thing you have to do is attach it to a table. And it just slides right on. And then what you're going to do is you're going to tighten this red thing, because otherwise, as you can see, it's going to be loose. So we're going to tighten that to get it so that it's not going to come off the table. And you still got this there, and again, you're just going to be turning it. Okay, so now we're going to grab our yarn. Now there's two choices with the yarn um, that you can do. You can start from like the outside string, or if it's a yarn skein that actually has like a center pull already in it, then go ahead and pull that. And as you notice, sometimes with yarn, when you pull it, you'll end up getting like a mess. And that's kind of what this will hold. See, I'm tugging it and it's not going to let me do any more unless I kind of pull in it. So that's what's going to be great about winding our yarn. By winding our yarn, we're going to be able to see if there's anything wrong with the yarn before we use it in our project. So what we're going to do, since this is not coming out for me... Okay, here we go. See how it's coming out? It's coming out in this big mess like this? Who wants to be in the middle of that with a project? So you can kind of take it out and you can kind of see how you can get the tangle out so that we can wind this up. So this is what's great. When you have a yarn bar winder, you're able to check your yarn for those indiscrepancies before you begin a project. And I'm just gonna check and make sure we should be good. Just checking for the tangle before I start. Cause you wanna kinda, okay, so we should be good. Now what you're gonna do is get your starting thread again. Doo -doo -doo. Get back to the beginning here. Okay. I was just checking to make sure we could go a little ways. Now what you're going to do, and I'm sorry for this being wobbly here. Now what we have to do is we take the yarn and we thread it through this part right here. Now some people can go like this and do it. I prefer just to go through the hole almost like you're threading a needle. Because that seems to work too, it's not going to come out. Now this part over here is where you have to attach this yarn. And when you put it like this, there's a little slit. Let me zoom in here so you can see it. There's a little slit that we want to lay it in. This is what ends up being the center pull. Now I can show you real quick what I mean by that. Here is one I've already done up. When we're done, we're going to be able to pull from the center to use this as a, for our projects. And it compacts down kind of nicely here. Let me zoom out here. It gives you a flat bottom, a flat top, and it makes it easier to almost stack yarns on top and compacts it down a little more. So that's what we're hoping to get to. So we put it in here, and sometimes what you can do, and again, we can kind of flip this up if we want, but I just like to leave it there because it's going to stay. Now, the other thing you want to do is hold on to this. Think of when you yarn, uh, use a loom, you tend to give it a little tension when you go around the pegs. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little tension here as we wind it. And you may see it slip off first, like it just did to me there. So just reattach it. Give it a little tug. Sometimes if you hold it just enough for it to go around like that and then a little tension. Like I said, think of how you wrap a peg. If you do it too loose, it's going to be messy. If you do it too tight, you know, you want a good steady tension and just gently go around. And as it moves, it's winding it up. Now what's great about this too is you can get kids to help. My daughter loves helping me do this because she'll wind it up as I... Um, do this part over here with the tension. She'll sit here and wind it and she has fun with it. Now the other thing I wanted to make you notice is the base. I wouldn't go past the base too much because otherwise if you get caught in the gears underneath it's a pain in the butt. Believe me I've had that happen. I'll be watching TV and I'm sitting here going like this. Next thing I know it gets off and it gets down here and it just is a mess. So I would definitely recommend 
making sure to keep an eye on it. If you just, this whole skein might fit on here that we have because it's a small one, but typically I've been doing about two balls per like a medium sized you know, skein, but it really just depends on your preference. And that's all we're doing is we're just winding it up. Here's slow mo. And what's great is it compacts it down to make it easier to store. It allows me to check to see if there's anything wrong with the yarn. And you can see that it didn't quite go where I wanted it to, so I just kind of went back and just restarted it a little bit. And it works out pretty fast. And you're just going to take a nice steady pace. And you might see that you need to stop and like get your yarn that's in the skein out a little bit more, which is fine. Just make sure when you come back that you still give it that little bit of tension before you start winding again. Now the reason it's adding so tight is because I'm getting to another looks like knot in my yarn. See up here. So I want to be able to take this out and say, hey, what's going on here? Let's get it all untangled. Okay. It's because another strand is getting caught in it. So now I'm going to stop and I'm going to just pull this out some more so I have something to work with. This skein really has a lot of tangles in it. This is the first one I've actually had, I believe, this many tangles in it. So you definitely kind of want to check it if you can before you start using it just to get an idea if it's going to give you any problems as I said with the yarn. Really it's not giving me that many problems. But I'm just going to show. So you would keep going until you got this as wound up as you wanted it to. I'm going to stop early just because I do feel like you're going to be able to keep going. Try not to let it get off the base. And if you need to stop, which we're going to do, all you're going to simply do is cut your yarn if you wanted to make a small ball like this, then you just cut off your yarn and then just wind it up the rest of the way. And then what you're going to do, if you look here, that's what we want for our center pull. Now what we're going to do, if you look from the side, is I'm going to pull it off. Typically I would use both hands and I would slide it up, keeping my thumb under the part that's going to be the center pull and pull it off. And then there you go. This is where my yarn will be pulling out from for my project. It, it's a great way, like I said, you can make little ones like this up. And another thing that's cool that you can do, if you're going to do color changes, is the outside of one that you do, just simply attach to the inside. Let me get, see how I have a new one? If I wanted to change colors and go from this color to this color, I take the outside part of the one ball of yarn, and I tie it to the inside part of this one. And then that way, as I'm working my project, it will go from one ball of yarn that I'm using to the next seamlessly. So that's another cool way you can do it. But like I said, it's great for checking and making sure there's nothing wrong with the yarn. It's fairly simple to use. I will put a link below to this particular one that I got from Joann's. And again, Joann's does coupons sometimes, so you might be able to get it even cheaper. So keep a lookout for that. It's a great investment. I definitely compact stuff up. I'm actually going to show you something really quick. Let's turn over to here. Oops. Wrong one. Turn over to here and you look up. I actually have quite a bit organized in here because of doing, excuse me, winding it up, a couple that I didn't do. And it works great. I mean, I have a really fuzzy yarn that it works great for. I've done it with homespun yarn. So, I mean, it's really cool and it really helps compact things down. Hope you enjoy.